Hi everyone and welcome to the seventh SIDB podcast. This time we're catching up with uh, representatives of LW in Poland. Uh, so before any, uh, we have, do anything else, I'd let them all introduce themselves. So. Um, okay, so I think I'm first. <laughs> um, uh, hello, I'm uh, Janna and I'm from uh, Gdańsk Crawler Derby uh, from Sirens team. Um, we are a fairly new league uh, from Gdańsk. We've been functioning only for only like um, one and a half years. So we are, I think we are maybe the youngest in Poland uh, in terms of like the span of in which yeah. we are functioning. Um, so we've managed to organize some uh, like small tournaments and boot camps during this, uh, this time. And I think you will also see on this podcast material from last year's uh, tournament that was called Mayday. And that was a short track tournament uh, with teams from Poland. This year, well, we would be organizing it right now, but due to the situation, everything is called off. So, yeah. Okay. Hello, my name is Alyssa or Liz Frizzle and I am the head NSO for the Warsaw Help Address official squad. So we are the officiating league here in Warsaw and we work throughout Poland. And that's pretty much it. And my next. <laughs> my name is Eva. Uh, I used to skate with Breslo Rebels, but I'm on a yeah, gap from skating, but I'll be speaking on behalf of in Poland that I'm and I've been managing for the past two years so uh, I hope we'll catch up with some news. Hi I'm Daria and uh, some of you knows, knows me as Rospier Daria so I'm uh, here to represent Smoking Wheels Krakow Roller Derby and uh, yeah, and actually I will be here cheering for other teams and also tell you a little bit about ourselves as well. So that's it. Cool. Um, hi, I'm Joanna and I'm um, representing Bratislavia Magic's uh, uh, role squad uh, team, which was found in 2014, I guess. Uh, we are located in Wrocław, so it's in south of Poland. And I personally joined in 2015, I think. So uh, pretty much from the start. Uh, yeah, pretty much it, I would say. <laughs> uh, I'm just Kitten from Warsaw Hellcats. Um, in June, uh, I, will, uh, I will have my fifth year anniversary in Royal Derby. Uh, and yeah, I think during the conversation it will show what I'm uh, taking, uh, what things I'm uh, taking among my uh, team and not only. Hey, hello, my name is Ramona. I'm from Bad Rangers Poznan Roller Derby League. Um, coming actually from uh, Bad to the Bone uh, team that used to skate in Poznan and was the first, I guess, or one of the first. Uh, teams in Poland, and so. So, so your 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 doctoring. The conversation goes. I guess so. Thanks everyone for introducing themselves. Um, I guess the first thing we should talk about as we talk about in all these broadcasts is how Derby got started in Poland, because um, I think Derby, Poland was in the second wave or so of roller derby starting in Europe, if you want to think about the early starters like Germany and things. And I think Poland was in the next set, wasn't it? So probably someone from Warsaw can tell us about that, I think. Oh, that no. Ah, uh, not really. <laughs> Uh, Poznań should start as yeah. they were okay. the first team in Poland. Yeah, I, I can just tell you. Assuming, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's all right. Uh, I can, what I can tell you is that I've been skating myself, I think, just like, uh, just kidding. 
uh, for five years, more or less, I guess. And all, it all started about six years ago in Poland uh, when there was one skater that thought that there is actually no uh, team here. So maybe we should start one. And she did that. So that's pretty cool. She, she gathered some friends. She found a, a guy who would coach them. And, and thanks to that, now we are having uh, Derby in Poland. And we have Bad Rangers uh, coming from um, Bad to the Bone, the first uh, actually uh, team. And what else I can tell you is that I myself was looking into roller derby uh, that six or seven years ago. I didn't find any team, but I wasn't the one who came up with the idea that I could start my own team. So thank God for other people who, who are actually able to, to, to make you know, dreams into actions and, and they can uh, follow and not just leave it for anyone else to do. So that's, that's pretty cool. And I think uh, since then we, we've been developing quite cool because quite well, I must say, I think there's now like 11 or 12 teams uh, across Poland, right? So, so I'm, I'm very happy to, to see new people and new teams uh, being developed across the country. And it's been, I think it's been quite a consistent rate of growth, right? Because since the first, since Derby started in Poland six years ago, we've now got to 11, 12 teams, which is quite a, quite a, quite a growth rate. Um, yeah. So yeah. I, I guess quite early on, it must have been, also it must have been fairly early on in the thing, it's been, <laughs> being a capital city. Uh, uh, the first uh, team was Bat to the Bone, founded by Vulgar Ver in mm. 213, uh, just like in the middle of this year. And right behind it, it was uh, Warsaw Hellcats. It was founded in December 213. Uh, it was, yeah, like uh, our founders, our founder, uh, she was very, she is very fond, uh, like into things like pinup, vintage cars, California vibe, California skating, and that leads her to Royal Derby. And when she heard that uh, there's a team in Poland, uh, in Poznań, she asked her sisters, like, we have to do it also. Her twin sister said, no, 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 it's like, uh, we've heard that uh, story uh, before in your broadcast. It's like, no, it's too violent, too brutal. I don't want it. So they did it. <laughs> and that's how it started at just the end of the 213. And like, I don't know what team was next. Matic, I believe, it? yeah, I believe it was Bratislavia Matchix. And uh, from what I was told, because as I said, I didn't yeah, say from the very be beginning, but it was like 2000, uh, 2014. And uh, what I was told, it was just about, I don't know, two, two, two of, from, of our friends were just met in the internet and uh, were like, so uh, caught about the idea of uh, creating a role derby team in Wrocław. And basically that's how it started. And uh, from what I remember, uh, I, I think that there were, there were like a couple of boot camps and so it was a bit quiet for us for about first two years of skating at the beginning because there were no um, games that we've participated in or no in the, even like in the mixed games. So like the, the first the first tourma, tournament where we actually participated as a as a team was uh, the first seven tournament in Warsaw. But we existed before just without you know um, competition let's say with other with other teams, right? Yeah. I think that's how it, how it went. I don't know. I, yeah. I think sometimes you have to make your own tournaments or find people who hold them. Yeah. <laughs> um, when, we, when we had the Czech teams on, we were noting that uh, their newest uh, team in Ostrava has hosted a game before they've actually played a game. So we've maybe you've got to host right? it. Yes, we've yeah, we've <laughs> we lost. <laughs> <laughs> But it was great, absolutely fantastic game. Really, the, this power was amazing, and and they are actually. It's not it was a team from Ostrava. Ostrava was hosting this game, mm -hmm. but uh, we played against uh, Brno, so it was a little bit uh, tricky. But yeah, worth it. <laughs> I I will show you uh, the video after. <laughs> <laughs> It's like I joined Derby 215, so it have to be 
like before, so probably the end of 214, maybe beginning of 215, when there was a first boot camp in Poland. It was yeah. hosted by, uh, oh my God, Maureen, as mm -hmm. I remember well. It's only like, you know, team legends and like uh, <laughs> Polish <laughs> Derby legends. I only heard about it and maybe saw some photos. <laughs> Uh, then I think in 216 there was this first event like the it was Piranhas versus War versus Poland. Uh, I think so. Yeah, in Świecia. In or, Świecia, yeah, yeah, something. Yeah, like that this. was our first game ever. Uh, well, Herkat played uh, earlier, but it was a mixed team against Piranhas, uh, but it was yeah. like a I think first Polish official Open Royal Derby event. Yeah, I think so. So a lot of your early games were actually against other Polish teams then, because that's quite unusual, because usually you find that a team starts and then there's no one else to play in the country, so they play neighbouring countries. Yeah, well, it's like uh, Warsaw Hellcats first games uh, were at the same day. Uh, one was Scream against Heartbreaking Dolls and the second was the bout against the uh, Prague City Royal Derby. Uh, we lost both, but girls have, well, I didn't play, I've only heard, but they, they didn't know what they were doing at the track, they were so freshy, but they had so much fun that they decided to do it, and then the teams in Poland, there were like, you know, like almost month after month, there were like founding, so it was easy to find, uh, for, to have games against each other. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah, I think actually one thing that we still are experiencing is the fact that we uh, keep on having games of mixed team, yeah. uh, teams that can actually uh, have the full squad to play. Uh, so I, I guess, you know, that's, that's how, that's a kind of workaround to not to have, uh, to leave the country to, to, to play with someone any, anyway, right? So... Yeah, I, yeah. I wanted to say the same thing as as Ramona did that um, there there is like uh, during the year I would say that, that there is more uh, events where uh, there are like mixed teams um, participating against, for example, one team who has the whole squad, or yeah. it's like uh, totally totally uh, you know with with players from from different teams. And I think that you know partially it's cool because you know this is like. Uh, one of the reasons that we know each other so well, I would say. And uh, later on, there will, we, are, we are having like uh, the, the the teams from from the opposite, from different countries, right? So so, I don't know for Bratislava, it was like uh, recently when we started to play against I don't know Czech uh, teams or uh, uh, basically yeah Czech teams. <laughs> <laughs> I guess bro, the same as us. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Only in Poland we don't have the problem to like borrow. Uh, Russia, come on, I forgot. Sorry. Yeah, continue. <laughs> uh, we don't have this problem with borrowing skaters from other teams. We have a lot of teams. Not all teams have a full loose roosters, but when one team is want to play against other team, uh, there are like asking. On our Polish yeah, there are backyard, if, people, if somebody there are wants to play with good. them, and there are always people that are willing to play, so uh, yeah, that's that's good. So we can always find the full rooster among the Poland. So, and that's actually very, uh, actually very great about roller derby in Poland that when you are a fresh, uh, freshy and you want to play and for example in mixed team or you don't have a full squad in your team you always have opportunity to learn from other most experienced uh, skaters so this was a case with me and my team so uh, it was absolutely amazing that everyone is welcoming you with, with you know with a hug and so you we're glad that you are here and you play you know so it's it's absolutely fantastic Daria, were you playing the first game with us? Yes, with yeah, you. And from Chrome, uh, from Chrome Sirens, uh, I think Ola was yes. playing the, the, the yes. first game with us, she right? Was. Yeah. And <laughs> after after playing her first game with you, then she started. Yes, her yes, yes. Team, yes. Like. <laughs> well, you know, it just shows. Obviously, she had a very good game. She decided to start her own team. Yeah. We were waiting for uh, we were waiting for Krakow to start some team because. Uh, 
In Poland, to start a team is like rather easy. We have that Facebook group, uh, Skates Poland and Royal Derby Poland, but mostly on Skates Poland, if somebody wants to start a team, they're like starting to write there. That is there in my city, somebody that would like to make it. And I remember like a few years ago when we there were people from one, I think, girl from Krakow, and the other commented like, no, in Krakow, we don't want to ride Derby. And it's like, oh, okay, <laughs> Yeah, it was. And then uh, Smoking Wheels uh, were founded like a few years ago. And that's great that uh, Krakow changed their mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think Daria yeah. has actually changed Krakow's mind because she's like, she's one of the people who, who just have such a crazy cool energy and you know i i love her when she was a freshie like you, like you said when you were playing with different people you you just found your place somehow and it was really cool and and i think it if it was for you if you were a little Ramona, I hope it older, was nice. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you, you might have been I hope that you said something nice because I didn't understand anything. I think sorry. Ramona has also frozen sorry. a bit. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Yeah, it's not your fault. Like, I, I think my internet connection is just un unstable. Like That's what it's showing sometimes. us. Yeah. yeah. But I, I was just saying that if Daria was probably like a couple years older, she would have started roller derby in Poland herself. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that was nice. and, uh, we can't always, uh, also forget that uh, we are not from all the teams from mm -hmm. Poland. We're yeah. missing a few teams like Warsaw Warsaw from uh, Warsaw, Free uh, City Piranhas. Wrestle Rebels, the second team from Wrocław. Uh, the newest uh, team, Silesian Hexes. Hexes. Yeah. Yeah. Hexes, yeah. Yes. They, they, they still don't play. They are very, very new and very, very few, but they're starting. And that's yeah, also cool. They were in Ostrava to learn something. So they're like connected. That, that That's also cool that we are like, somehow we are okay connected some played in some team then change it etc yeah. and of course uh, yeah uh, we have officials here official point of view it's important to always <laughs> have official reps you like yeah. having officials in these things they have but, very uh, different they can have a very different point of view than skaters but uh speaking of teams that we don't have here um i want to start showing the footage from the thing at this point because it's a good, it's a good excuse so one of the ways we're trying to represent those teams that can't be here is by picking games from tournaments to show that have some of those teams in it. So we mentioned, uh, we mentioned before that uh, Krim Simons held their own tournaments to get, to get games. So um, we have the first bit of footage we have is a game from, uh, from the Mayday tournament. Sharing working. So you should all hopefully see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to start this playing. There's no audio on this, so we can talk. If you want to tell us a bit about um, about this, this is this game is with Warsaw versus Free City Piranhas. But if you want to tell us a bit about what it actually is, um, so okay, this was so. Yeah, this was the Mayday tournament. Uh, this was last May, about twenty uh, fifth of May, I think, last year. Yeah, something around that, like. Uh, at the end of May, usually. Yeah. Uh, and we were planning it for it to be annual. But <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, okay, so this is actually one of the venues that we train on uh, and we have practices there. So you can see that the track is there and it's, 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 it's a short track. So it's, uh, uh, it's taking up uh, less space than a normal track. And I think they're about to start. Or, yeah, they start now. Um, I think for both of those uh, teams, does, that was the first short track ever. I think uh, for all of the teams, that was the first sh short track. Or am I wrong? 
Yeah, I'd be yeah, for I think so. Yeah, I'd be didn't surprised you if it wasn't. Play earlier? Uh, uh, excuse didn't me? you play the the siren? Yeah, didn't play we earlier? did. We did. We played uh, about two months before what you can see here. We played um, one bout, and that was it. Actually, <laughs> so we played one bout, and then uh, there was melee. Um, so yeah, so for people listening on the podcast who don't know how short track, short track roller derby works, basically the track is about half. It's actually slightly less than half the area of a um, of a WTA track, and you have a shorter roster, so uh, seven seven skaters rosters. Two two blockers on track at a time, and there's some there's some changes to point scoring and things to make it all simple. But it's basically smaller and faster. So di why did you choose short track as your uh, as your thing to hold your first tournament? Um, mostly because we didn't yeah, you have can any. Can actually feel the what? Oh, okay. Um, uh, because we didn't have a bigger venue. <laughs> That's basically it. Um, so in Gdańsk there was the problem of like, renting something bigger and we already were working with uh, Skate Arena, uh, which that play is called, place is called. So that's why the short track and also they have a very nice concrete to ride on. Mm -hmm. So we thought that that would be fun uh, as well. And um, yeah, that, that, that's also, a, I think that's also a good way of starting for a new league. And uh, we were at the time, we were only, I think, practicing for half a year. And most of people were out of the fresh meat. Uh, and uh, that was also easier for us to gather the teams. And, um, and yes, that's, that, that's, that's why the short track. Also, maybe uh, the the rules are a little bit less complicated. There are no like penalties and this kind of related things. So, yes. So, was anyone else in this in this chat at this event, or were you? I think I mean Kitten was yeah. okay. The Joanna was. I don't know. I was at one uh, short track event in Gdańsk, but I don't know if it was this, but the previous one. I okay. I really. Don't know. I'm look, looking at the uh, footage and looking for myself because I. But I think I was sitting just. I like, think was the other. One. Yeah, I think so too. That it was the, yeah. the other one. But it, yeah. it was the other one. But here are some people uh, from from. I, at least I see one or two people from from Bat Rangers, but I guess they were again borrowed. <laughs> Yes, they were. <laughs> yeah, but uh, Poznan is helping because on the other one, the like your player uh, Radek was announcing it, so Poznan is always. Yeah, yeah, he was the this. announcer here. Yeah. You, can, yeah. yeah. From I mean, as much as we can. Hmm. I I I I just saw that uh, for for NSO uh, the guys from from Poznan were there as well. So uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. They were. Yeah. Yeah, but Shimon is like very close to. Uh, Shimon, Shimon actually is a person who I don't know did some kind of weird transfer. Let's say <laughs> <laughs> no money was exchanged, <laughs> but we can we can feel that uh, you know uh, why he wants to be with sirens. Although we miss him dearly, especially, especially a very one siren, right? Because uh, yeah. <laughs> the official from, let's say it aloud, the official from uh, Bat Rangers is a partner, the founder of from Sirens. So that that's why this uh, transfers were made. It doesn't one big family. Yes. Yeah, we are one big family. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so. Um... I mean, this is we're just going to keep playing this, but feel free to talk about other things if you want to. But I'm always quite interested by how, by teams that effectively start out by hosting a tournament, because it's not, not usually the thing you try to do, right? You normally try to have a game and then work up to hosting a tournament. It's unusual to host a <laughs> tournament as your first thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you, you, uh, normally, you just like uh, start with something 
small one, like one bout or scream even, even. But like uh, sirens, you were very uh, brave since the very beginning, like to. Yeah, they just went deep waters, you know, from the very start, yeah. and like <laughs> try to conquer. True, like, yeah. <laughs> Big we just assume that we can swim. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, you live by the sea, so you know it's like in your, in your <laughs> like in your DNA. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, we actually did the bout two months before that, so that was like a warm up, and but then we wanted to do the, also the tournament, and I don't know, we just. We just thought that it would be fun and it could be a chance for us to play something and for other teams in Poland to play something new, which is short track. Um, so, um, well, we didn't have that much experience in organizing stuff, but also we were supported by uh, people from other teams, like from Poznań, and they helped us uh, in organization of this uh, whole thing so that was easier because we had that like feedback and that help um, but we've learned a lot from <laughs> Can I uh, just from mention our... one thing uh, about having uh, like your beginnings uh, and and bounce already and yeah. everything for me that's like the best thing ever because usually what I what we've experienced in Poland is like you start a team, you build up uh, your squad, then you can do something about this. But for me, it feels like we're uh, training or we're practicing roller derby, but we're not playing roller derby uh, for most mm -hmm. of the beginning, right? And with uh, Chrome Sirens, it was just like uh, when they had people, they wanted to, like we all want to, but they actually did it. They started playing this way or another like by using short track rules by short track rules but for me that's really cool because you don't get uh, like you can level up your skills during practices but the the amount of experience you get from each and every bout you take part in that's just something like you know that that you can't put price on so that's that's very cool start and i think they are profiting from that till now and and that's really really cool yeah actually what what you are saying is what we thought about uh when we started the the team so the first thing that we thought of was first to gather the people and then to start screaming uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, th there was also screaming, but <laughs> doing the scrimmages between the teams, like the inside teams, and yeah. also start to play uh, as much as we can <laughs> uh, with other teams. Uh, so that was also a way of of doing that by just like, even though we were like fresh, very fresh at that time. And we sucked. <laughs> but, uh, that didn't matter because we uh, knew that we are learning a lot, and that was very important to us. Oh, yeah, it's also that you play on the same level uh, with the teams on the same level, like knowing the short track, right? Because the the teams here on this event they play the short track for the first time. They may have a little higher skills, but the know knowing of the short track rules were the same. So like. Yeah, that's yeah. true. And short track is like, like I don't know, some kind of weird thing that you uh, get to experience. It doesn't matter if you have tried derby, like the, the full track derby, let's say, uh, before or not, because I remember our first time when we did that. Uh, I think it was uh, last year during the, the summer holidays. And the shock that we have experienced about the pace and everything that uh, you know like skating the other way round, like no mm. derby direction yeah. everything that was just i remember that first shock after first jam everyone was just like gazing at each other and we didn't know what we were doing <laughs> and the fact, yeah and the fact that actually uh, each each player has to be jammer and uh, there's like a sequence that you have to follow and there is no like you know eh, I'm not going to do that because I suck at jamming. 
no, you're going to have to, and, and like you're you're going. It's your turn now, and that's yeah, it. That's so it's, it's like, yeah, it, it's no help it's, is coming. Yeah, <laughs> and it take it takes you uh, of sort of out of your comfort zone because as the years go by and you build up that experience, somehow you land like in one position or so like you know I'm going to be a blocker and that's what I like to do or usually I'm the pivot or. Uh, I only, you know, sub jam when when no no one has to do it, and it's um, like uh, you know after years of even skating or playing or just at the beginning, it's a great way, you know, to 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 try, uh, but yeah, new 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 stuff. Even you basically yeah. know the stuff for years or whatever. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's that that is producing the more the most versatile skaters yeah. ever so that's really really something also very i love about, um, about the short track even though i really suck at jamming and that's a terrible <laughs> thing for me to do but uh, but you know it makes you build up the courage to do that because mm. you know you have no other choice and it is only 60 seconds because, you know, at least it could be oh, worse. It could it be having to jam like for two more. minutes. That it, is it, what... It, it feels like five minutes, okay? <laughs> not in my head, but... It, yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's true. Yeah. Uh, hola. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can see the other teams just, like, yeah. going. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so we're there. Yeah, and also for the short track, I think it's quite unique that the jammers are as tired as the blockers like usually when you are uh, jamming in the um, like normal 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 size track um, the jammers are way more tired than the blockers because the blockers have the longer periods of time of like actually playing and not waiting for the jammer to do the leap and here the, the jammer takes only like a maybe 10 seconds to do the whole round so it's like you're blocking and you think like oh yeah he's gone time for like rest and then you're like oh no he's, he's back again <laughs> <laughs> and also i think you've got to because there's only two two blockers on track like you've got to be slightly more you've got to be even more aware of where you are and where they are because yeah yes you have to like constantly be aware of where is the jammer? Where is the other team? Where is my other blocker? It also builds up the skill of like just looking around and seeing what is going on. It's okay. There was a small blue bit in this footage for some reason at half time. Oh. I'm not so quite sure why. <laughs> oh, it does okay. go away. Uh, it does <laughs> stop being blue. Um, but while it's being blue, um, another thing you mentioned that I wanted to come back to uh, was the uh, fact that. Uh, in Gdansk, you don't have a, um, a sense you, you, one of the reasons you played short track was because of space in the hall. I just mm -hmm. was interested to know how it's be, hall, getting access to halls and convincing people that you use halls is one of those things that seems to be a perennial roller derby problem. Yeah. So I'm just interested in knowing from the other teams about how that's been. Was it a problem starting out? Do you get, or have you all got very friendly halls that love you, that don't mind you skating in? Uh, we're all okay, gonna who's gonna start? <laughs> what will be the answer? <laughs> of course, there are problems with venues. Uh, I think a uh, few years uh, like uh, a few years ago, it was harder to find a venue that want to rent uh, whole uh, their space for skates. But now it's like more accessible also we have few papers from venues that we are skating on that we didn't ruin the floor so we like sharing these materials also and uh, teams are using this when they want to find the, the venue uh, Hellcats begin in the old music club and uh, the floor was like awful it was wooden but it was awful falling apart we were like uh, sticking tape to the uh, to the floor so it will be uh, there will be no hot uh, to cover the holes and so it can be like in one part the uh, track was almost fit there but in the middle there was some kind of I don't know metal musical club stuff so it wasn't very safe 
and it was dirty, it was really dirty, like after the concert, so like, you know, cigarette butts and other people's hairs in your wheels, etc. Uh, but we are very dedicated and right now, when i thinking about those times, like, uh, I do it like, yeah, oh, well, yeah, <laughs> okay, see trainings. Now we're very happy because we have a Royal, uh, Royal Disco place in uh, Warsaw. They have great floor. They let us to paint the truck and they have uh, skates on place you can rent and they have a discount for uh, people who are coming to our trainings so we couldn't imagine better well it could be a little bigger because the track all fits there but there's like no safe space so but it's like still like a heaven for us and for uh, events we have two or three venues that we are like cooperating and they are great for uh, events but too expensive to train there. Mm. Yeah. In Krakow we got lucky actually <laughs> because we have two places to uh, train. One is Royal Skating Arena and second one is a bigger gymnasium uh, hall so it's uh, Actually, we got very lucky. It's uh, not so expensive, and and the roller skating arena also, you know, you can borrow as all 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 gear there, and uh, it's uh, easier for the fresh meets in Krakow than, <laughs> for example, for fresh meets in Warsaw in the past years. Uh, in in Wrocław, I, I would say that. It's always been a struggle because if you would find a, a yeah yeah if you would find finally a, a, a room where a venue where we could train it was uh, for example last year we were training in a, in a yeah in a in the in a venue that that was pretty small for 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 us to to even put the the, the full size track so so we were not let's say. Uh, allowed to do that but uh, the good news was was that we we could train there so 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 that was an advantage uh, <laughs> and uh, this year we got like a new venue to, to tr where we could train but due to covid yeah right now everything let's it's let's say put on hold um what we did last year was also to yeah we gathered with some some uh, other teams like uh, let's say not so popular sports so um, uh, a hockey team, um, box lacrosse and bike polo, I think. And we participated in this um, citizens project uh, um, action. So, so we created a, a project for municipal play field. And uh, actually we won the, 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 the whole thing. So, so we could get the money from the government to, to build it up. But again, it's right now put on hold because uh, <laughs> we don't know what will happen after the, the, the pandemic and, and where will go all the, let's say, money that were <laughs> designated to do that. Uh, yeah, we'll see about that. But as I said, it's always been a struggle, but, you know, the Royal Derby community is pretty resourceful. So, so we always try to, to find a way to, to play and to skate, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Asha, it's actually very funny. It is very funny because in Krakow, I don't know if they... Uh, if you were first and uh, our bike polo lacrosse team and hockey team fought that, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's uh, let's uh, talk with the Krakow Royal Derby team because they <laughs> made exactly the same thing. They I asked think, I us think to that participate in this I, project, and we also I won. Think, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that you know that it was the uh, let's say they followed out followed us because I I know the guys from the um, uh, yeah because I'm, I also play hockey so it's kind of like uh, all the let's say outsider sports that uh, we could find and gather together and uh, you know throw something uh, at the government like give us something uh, yeah so I think that either way it will it happened like at the same time or uh, yeah basically basically the tactics uh, work so, so, so. you know those are the same people they know each other yeah, like, of course. So. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah and Joanna is the link between us and the other the other you know less popular sports <laughs> it's like you know uh, you gotta find someone who knows someone 
whose friend is the mother of someone who can give you, I don't know, money for, for a new venue or a, or, a, or a place to, you know, to skate. <laughs> so, yeah, so I yeah. guess it's always useful to have context, but also the other thing that's always, as we've talked, it's come out a lot, has been how people have sort of started new things. Uh, all, um, if I You've, um, there's been a lot of initiatives that have been happening in Poland. So I guess I know also the Team Poland started as sort of a, almost a last minute thing. So I kind of want, I feel so, feel that we'd, I'd like to hear from Eva about, let's hear about Team Poland a bit while this is going on. Well, How it uh, started and then. It started in a pretty controversial way, really, because um, it's been discussed in Poland so that we should have an official governing body for roller derby uh, and that we should form a national representation but uh, at first we thought we weren't really ready for that because we did not have experienced players we did not have like real-time roller derby coaches and i remember uh, in it was probably around March or April 2017, uh, we were in Poznan uh, with the girls from uh, uh, Breslau Rebels and uh, it was back to the bond back then, still Ramona, am I right? Um, I don't think so. I think that might have been the time where there was something in between, but I believe we were already uh, bad rangers. Yeah, but anyway, there were four of us. There was uh, me and uh, Justyna from Breslau Rebels and two girls from probably back to the bone still. <laughs> um, we can say Poznan and it will be. <laughs> and we were talking about um, why didn't we want to form a national team? And then we thought that Actually, we are being ridiculous because there's been a lot of people from abroad um, asking why don't you do that? Why don't you form a national team? You, you will make the country visible and we will help you to, to organize that, to, to sort things out. And that was this one night, one night in Poznan when we decided that, well, why not? let's give it a shot because we don't know when the next World Cup will be. <laughs> so uh, we decided to put up an application form for, uh, for the skaters uh, to form. First, we wanted to form a training squad, not the real representation because we wanted, well, we had different goals back then because this was our first time ever. Uh, at the World Cup and our goal was to first make Poland visible on international arena but apart from that um, that was a huge chance for us to meet really experienced uh, skaters and coaches and to gain new skills and to somehow organize roller derby training in Poland uh, so at the very beginning um, we asked for help with the tryouts, which was a bit odd because uh, we didn't have a team and we didn't have uh, a coach really. <laughs> um, so we just wanted to, um, to pick the people that would suit the team best. Uh, we also made a note that we would like, let me uh, rephrase that. Um, we were thinking that, okay, we are not strong or trained well enough yet uh, to compete with uh, more experienced teams, but still we want to at least half of the team to be Polish girls, to give them a chance to skate against like really strong um, roller girls. Um, and that's what we did. At the very first stage, uh, uh, the person that was uh, doing the trials, that, that was uh, Furoshis from Amsterdam, uh, she picked 25 girls and that was the core of the training squad. 
Uh, and for the World Cup, we picked uh, 20, but saying that, yeah, we need half of the team to be Polish. Uh, and that's what happened. Um, so, yeah. Well, they all have to be Polish to be in a team Poland, but they were like residents uh, of Poland, right? Residents of Poland, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, technically, not all of the team Poland members are Polish. They have Polish ancestors. Well, yeah, but that they make them. Like... Yeah, yeah, like local girls. <laughs> you had you had a lot more people that lived in that actually live in Poland than. Yes. Some of the other national teams do. Yes, that's what that was uh, one of. Let's say um, it might sound harsh, but uh, it was one of our conditions that we want our girls to to learn and to gain as much experience as possible. Uh, so, so yeah, we made it. I think uh, I think it was quite successful because we played four games. Uh, we played against Norway, Costa Rica, Japan, and Team West Indies. Mm. Uh, and we finished with two wins and two losses. We won against Japan and Costa Rica, and we lost against Norway and Team West Indies. So uh, nobody was disappointed. I think it was actually quite a big success for such a fresh team. Especially that we had some girls from USA and they didn't have many chances to, to get together with the rest of the training squad to train. But a good thing about being a new team and not really having one regular coach that's working with the team for like two or three years was that um, girls from USA uh, asked um, their coach from Boston, uh, as I remember, um, and he was training them. There was like one or, or two training sessions for American girls in Boston, which was really good. Uh, we got to train with Team Germany in Berlin, thanks to uh, Team Poland's coach. We had two coaches, really. We had uh, Kata Pulta from uh, Bear City, and we had uh, recruit from Southern Discomfort. I'm sorry, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> so um, right now things are on hold because of uh, why everything else in Derby is mm. on hold. Uh, but we're in a process of discussing um, what to do next, uh, what we want to do, what is our next goal for the next World Cup. Because obviously we're not an emerging nation anymore. We made fall invisible. Uh, we're thinking about uh, expanding the training squad because uh, some of the girls here locally stopped uh, training. Some of the girls from abroad uh, also stopped uh, like competitive skating. Uh, so they are willing to take up some bench roles, which is great because we know each other, so it would work really, really well. Um, maybe coaching roles as well, but we're not entirely sure. It's not, it's not been decided yet. Um, we would love to work with uh, Rick and Kata again, but we need to vote on that. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're in a process of preparing the solid plan for the next World Cup, and we're in a process of discussing uh, the terms proposed and options proposed by Royal Derby Nations Committee on the structure of the tournament itself, on the timeframes and everything connected with it. Because obviously, with people. Uh, living all around the world, it's important to find like one solution that makes everybody happy. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, yeah, so progress is being made. But one thing I want to go back to is uh, obviously being a being being your first World Cup, you learn a lot of things from from being being in a World Cup and playing a mix of people you never you really played before. So, um, was there anything you felt? came out of the first World Cup? Um, I mean, did you feel you were learning stuff as, as you were playing games even, or was the, I know you were, yeah. No, I, I wasn't playing games personally. Exactly. 
exactly yes yeah, so uh, well uh, what what i would say from you know observations and and uh, what well, I was in a training squad, so I know what, what came back after the World Cup. Uh, I think uh, the most important thing for us uh, was uh, gaining confidentiality. Uh, no, being confident. It's yeah. not the right word, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like becoming more confident about our skills, about our possibilities about what our bodies can do because obviously well if you don't have really experienced uh, person to guide you through your training sessions you have maybe maybe no idea is not the perfect term but uh, you are amazed at what you can learn in a really short period of time how you can improve and how you can like transfer the knowledge to your team later. So I think that was the most valuable thing. Uh, also, uh, we gained a lot of contacts around the world, which uh, which is very helpful because you know we have resources for knowledge regarding skating and officiating and just oh hello Kat. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I would say so. This is useful. I think that um, it's getting better and better. After the World Cup for the past two years, uh, girls from the training squad have been training with uh, men's roller derby. Uh, unfortunately, it stopped. Last training took place in January, I think. Mm. Uh, but there's been some Team Poland babies being born. There's been some um, people like skaters uh, getting retired. But like I mentioned, these are the people that are either willing to come back. I'm talking about the derby moms uh, and the retired ones still want to help the training squad uh, by taking up the bench and coach roles. So. And I think you know that kind of transition happens in in non-national teams as well. Like you get people, yeah. so it's sort of a natural, it's a natural process. Um, um, as we said before, like Poland is very used to play in mixed teams, uh, but I think like what uh, after observing what's happening in Poland, I think the team that best used the the World Cup is Poznan. You, yeah. uh, you Poznan. Like after World Cup, they exploded. That the, their team, the, the, their like their level, like was higher and higher after World Cup. I don't know if it gives you like uh, more energy or anything, but it was like really good use of of, of what yeah. what was happening there. I, I think so. It's yeah, like yeah, from I my from that. my observations, yeah. Yeah, exactly. We could actually feel that. I think it's like uh, maybe. It's the the effect of of uh, how many people from our team uh, were actually on Team Poland. Uh, there were four four players, uh, which is super cool, and I'm very proud of of being part of Bad Rangers now uh, because uh, most of them are still skating. Uh, and what I can tell you is that. Uh, of course, the this level of of skills goes up. Like amazingly, I, uh, on the other hand, I I I think they I, I can tell you with my heart crossed that uh, they were wonderful skaters before that. They yeah. became even better afterwards. But the thing that they 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 learned some things. They passed on a vast amount of knowledge, definitely. But another thing is that the energy that they brought from from this event that's something that you cannot like put price on because even if we lost all four games they would definitely have the same energy the same uh, approach that you know now we can see that we can compete with uh, people from different countries f with the, we could have uh, beaten some of the teams that we lost with uh, if the if the teams were uh, consisting only of people who are actually of that nationality and you know like this kind of confidence that uh, we're doing something uh, in a really good way let's say 
and and that we're taking Derby in in the right direction and that's that's really cool and I hope that everyone can like at least feel what we felt then, uh, what we got from them coming back and and uh, what we're trying to to pass on like in in organizing some tournaments or, or boot camps or whatever. You're doing great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, Thank for you. about passing on this energy to other skaters, it's uh, yeah, like. I think when when uh, when Eva was uh, telling about the, uh, the the about when we were playing, I just remembered how uh, because not many of us could uh, actually see that uh, on site. Uh, but I remember that we organized a small event at a uh, at a place or something, and we played the games. Uh, online uh, live and we were cheering for the people who couldn't hear us but we were just tearing the place apart uh, <laughs> I remember that why my throat was just you know as I was after a cool concert or something the next day because we were screaming so much and we we could actually feel some kind of super strange connection with them and that's that's what really motivates you to do some more because like I said, you can practice derby, but when you watch it or when you actually play it, that's the, the whole fun, I guess. Yeah. But I also think that watching the World Cup uh, with Poland taking apart was like, oh my God, we made it. We, yes. We really did. <laughs> yeah. Amazing, yeah. And I think it's, I think you're right. I mean, I think every team that's played in that World Cup for the first time got some of the same we've shown we can do it and I think that's it. I've always been most pro most supportive of getting the newer teams to play to play in World Cups because yeah. they get the most from it because often what you just need to be shown is that you can do it yeah, yeah. but to be honest I, I need to all tell you that uh, what I'm saying is coming from a person who was not the biggest fan of uh, creating Team Poland uh, in the first place to be honest like when when there were some, uh, you know, talks going on, like, should we do it? Uh, and, you know, I, I wasn't thinking that it's such a great idea. Maybe that's the, uh, that was based on the fact that um, we don't have, like, national um, derby association or, like, the actually, uh, roller derby cannot be recognized by Polish government, in a way, uh, as it's not recognized by international... Um, Olympic Committee, I guess, or there is some kind of weird connection on that level, or, and and uh, doping yeah. has changed to 216 when we were talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's maybe what what's uh, my my some kind of uh, I don't know uh, not great like feelings we were based can, on, uh, but uh, we can do that without the government, without uh, anyone just telling us what to do or picking the, uh, the, the the skaters for us so I'm cool with the fact that I was wrong <laughs> <laughs> well I was I was I remember speaking against uh, Team Poland a couple of years ago so it's like I totally understand your point of view because I was the same and then it was like why not why not we're gonna lose the chance so let's do it so. Yeah, that was the big shock when like the people that didn't want it the most like just did it. So it was like, <laughs> what? Okay, <Yeah. laughs> let's yeah. go with it. And like, yeah, I think like you said, Eva, it was controversial. Uh, controversial at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad you did in the end because it was it was good having you at the World Cup. Yeah. Um, so another thing, uh, because I'm conscious we need to have more footage, another thing that I'm glad someone started was the uh, the uh, now annual Slavic World Derby tournaments, uh, these, these sevens tournaments. So that's, that's what we call a segue in the, in the, um, in the field. Um, so, uh, is that gonna work? Let's see if that's gonna work. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good, okay. So this is, yeah, so, as well as short track and as well as having uh, Team Poland, and feel free to go back to talk about Team Poland, but um, 
The other thing that has been happening in Poland in the last three years has been this slowly growing gigantic um, sevens tournament, um, which is kind of it's kind of your international, or at least you know, um, sort of central and north, um, northeastern Local. Um, yeah. tournament. <laughs> uh, so yes, so I'm going to start. This is a this is from Pub Slab, which was. This year's you just got in before there was a um... yeah like two weeks or three weeks before it's like I remember the week before I was in Berlin and I was streaming uh, a crew had was asking me do you think people will come because of what uh, what health organization said it's like what you're talking to me I'm in Berlin I am living in a derby verse I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> What kind of virus? I don't know. Just like, don't worry about it. People for sure will come. And like three weeks later, we still managed to go to Ostrava. And I mm-hmm. think the week later, the, like the the whole world like closed. Stopped. So, stopped. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we were very very uh, lucky to to to, to tra- uh, when we were choosing this uh, when we were choosing the date. So do you want to say a little bit about what? So this is I've said it's called Fab Love, but you, does someone want to give a brief tracy of the point of um, of this? It's been going for three years now, and I know it's broadened in, since the start first one. But uh, the first one was a triple header against Warsaw Hellcats, White Knight Furies, and Heartbreaking Dolls. I think, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So and it start. Uh, there is official version that this started, like uh, when White Knight Furies, when we Warsaw Hellcats want to play against White Knight Furies, they said, "Hey, we both slap. Uh, let's uh, invite some third team," and that's how it all started. But there's also an uh, unofficial version, but also true. I love this. Uh, that <laughs> we wanted to, uh, we as a Hellcats, we wanted to uh, attend some other tournament and we asked if we can apply and I, I can't remember right now and I don't want to remember what <laughs> tournament it was and they told us uh, no because it's only for uh, Mediterranean teams uh-huh. and also then asked uh, Vienna to attend so we were like, well I was like, I'm like very uh mm, very fast i'm like very fast in anger it's like yeah so when the white knight furies uh proposed to us make slavic like yes if they don't want us in the mediterranean tournament we will have our own slavic tournament and like we will show the world but the first one i don't think it was like planned to be annual it was a thought but it wasn't some kind of uh, any kind of like dedication to it but after it, well, next year we were like, yeah, let's do it. We changed the format because we had like six teams on second Slavic Bal, and we have the Baltic. And like this year, it was uh, huge for us mm-hmm. to organize 10 teams, 17 games. So when you saw it's uh, like growing slowly, I, I don't feel it's slow, growing slowly. I, it's like in a horrendous. Uh, it, it, it grows so fast for us, but like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, if you've seen some of the other videos that Sam has done, then you've heard from the Baltic teams and you've heard from the Czech teams, and yeah. they've all talked about this as well. It's not just- The three got so sweet. <laughs> Yeah, and it's just, it's lovely. And um, that people, again, are a lot of teams rely on this, that they don't necessarily get to travel further west. Um, it's really nice for these teams that don't necessarily have the Euro or don't can't travel to some of these places that we have an opportunity to play with teams that are on similar levels, um, similar finances, that we're kind of growing together. And it's a really wonderful opportunity for a lot of teams. And so that I can interject not just the teams, but for the officials as well. Um, Much like what Eva was saying about um, wanting to have a Poland team that was primarily Polish for the Slavic Baltic um, tournaments, we also wanted at least 50% of the officiating crews to be um, from the Slavic or Baltic regions um, and primarily fairly new ones so that we would continue to develop our crews as well. So we have some really big names here, but also anybody who applied um, from 
Poland or Lithuania or Estonia, it didn't matter, you were automatically accepted and we would train you and find something for you to do regardless of level. So it's a, it's a great learning opportunity for everybody involved. I think there was some discussion about maybe, I mean, I know that in the Baltic, they've been having boot camps as well. Was there, was there any thought about maybe having officiating clinics next time as well? Or was that, since it's already growing? Um, uh, we've had uh, we've had uh, officiating boot camps in the past. Um, the same time that when we had Miracle Whip here, uh, we had Wonder Zebra and Shrek here, and oftentimes because of some of the connections that we've made um, through traveling and officiating, um, sometimes people will come and when there's a bout uh, the day after or sometimes the day before, we'll have sort of a specific training session. For example. Brain of Terror has come and officiated with us a couple of times. And when he's done this, he's done special trainings on how to do scoreboard operating with the different generations. Um, so we've had this privilege of people wanting to help support us and, and watch us grow as well. Well, yeah, even at the beginning, like uh, Warsaw Hellcats organized their first boot camp in 216 with New World Order. Uh, we were very also happy to have work with them and with Omar Gerd. So we have a coach that tells us a lot of things. We we weren't left alone like most of the teams in uh, in Poland. Like Eva said, that you didn't have the, the coaches, like somebody who's more experienced. And the same uh, from the very beginning, who we were like caring after our officials. So uh, at the same bootcamp, we have people from like Scabarella, uh, officials from New World Order. They came and they were eager to learn uh, our officials too. And like in like with caring about the officials, like thinking of, of them, that's why the, the, the Hell Badgers like uh, were formed from from Warsaw Hellcats. Yeah. And now they're like and... on their, almost on their own. Well, we, we take care of them, but they are like they they have their own personality right now and they uh, take care of our events. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, from again, from an officiating standpoint, um, what has been so nice is we do get a lot of these wonderful international um, officials coming in, these very strong, um, well-known individuals, in part because of the energy that was discussed when we were talking about Team Poland that, uh, for example, Ramona was discussing. Um, Polish teams have a great energy. Um, these games are fun to take part in. They're fun to watch. I mean, again, this may not be the most um, uh, high level, <laughs> you know, high level. Um, thank you. Uh, but at the same time, um, we're hospitable. Um, people are very nice to the officials. They're respectful to officials. Um, and because of that, and watching people very excited and eager to learn and to develop. Um, and also that a lot of the skaters come and will practice officiating as well. I've worked with a lot of these lovely people at some point or another on the crew. Um, makes people better skaters and it also makes the interaction between skaters and officials so much better and makes people want to come back. Um, we've done this, as they said, uh, three years and after the first or the second, uh, the real Slavic Baltic Festival um, tournament, so many people wanted to come back because they had such a fun time. So. Um, that says a lot about the teams that we have here too. Yeah. yeah, I almost managed to make it to this this one, but then I had I had personal issues that meant I couldn't. So I, you 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 have to hold another one, obviously at least one more, so I can actually come, come to <laughs> Well, it's like uh, it's for sure we want to make the fourth one. Uh, we still don't know when because now there's, we can't plan anything, uh, but there will be four. <laughs> That is, uh, I can say. Yeah, that. There, will, sure there, there, will there are no questions among our teams or uh, among Hellcats and Hellabadgers if uh, only uh, we ask each other like when. But, so there will be the fourth one. Will it be bigger? You can know, you get more than 10 teams? Well, it's like <laughs> for now, we don't uh, plan anything. Uh, but of course, I'm the one who's already thinking about the, the next <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and yeah I wanted I think uh, I, I wanted like the rest of the teams need to uh, agree with me but I just. wanted hmm? <laughs> they need to adjust to your thinking <laughs> <laughs> uh, the officials uh, want this too yeah yeah I wanted to make a two-day tournament 
I hope Moscow will come this time, Tallinn Tartu will come this time. Uh, who I was thinking, uh, well, yeah, the mostly this two, this team, this team, uh, these two teams, I, I miss this this year a lot, like Moscow, but they have their, their own, like, post for trainings mm. with Nina Nanchak, who was in Team Poland, I, as, I, as I recall. And Tali and Tartu, they couldn't have enough, they didn't have enough female skaters, uh, even for sevens, so, yeah. You know, it's good that we all have it recorded, so we'll, you know, hold on to your words uh, as, a <laughs> as a guarantee that it will happen. <laughs> well, it's like uh, when I watching the uh, Czech episode of this uh, podcast, uh, the heartbreaking those who are saying, well, Warsaw has easier because they have uh, a lot of sponsors. So I want to be clear on that. We don't like this year <laughs> i paid some things uh, at this fab slab from my own personal money just because i wanted it to happen mm. so even if there will be like very tough times uh well, i will go to bank ask for a loan and uh, the first will happen <laughs> so you can record it i can sign it it's, it's not a problem you definitely need your own logo to be present on the venue. Yeah, yeah. Like Monica's uh, face on the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Along with the Kubota one. <laughs> it's not. Uh, uh, it's not only me. It's like uh, Lisa called me uh, like a mastermind, and like yeah, I love spreadsheets and I love to tell people what they should do. Uh, so yeah, but it's a whole team and a lot of people that are helping us uh, with beginning with the stream, the medics, uh, along with the, all the health cards that are there, uh, always there and like, or stopping me or pushing me to, to do some things, to organize something. So it's not only me, but like, as I like to talk, uh, you can always see me in the front. <laughs> You always keep you? the Sorry. best seat for yourself <laughs> in the front row. <laughs> As you know, you can't see me uh, on any of the streaming uh, <laughs> videos. So it's like I, during the event, I, I, it's, uh, it's not about You're the me, silent so partner the then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, the man in black, the woman in black. <laughs> But I mean, you're right. I mean, it does also is a testament to everyone else supporting it, right? I mean, you can't, one person can't make a thing happen if everyone else doesn't want to do it. So. Yeah. And well, it's like uh, when I like, like I was talking at Iraq this year about Central Eastern Region, uh, Royal Derby, now region. Uh, I was thinking that the Warsaw is in a very good position because, uh, and Warsaw Hellcats, we worked with Omar Gert, so we were like, uh, uh, New World Order take care a little of us, they show us the big world derby, uh, we joined the WFTDA in 217, it was very intense uh, year for us, we played against Thunderdomes against Crime City Rollers. So it's like uh, back then I didn't realize this, but when last year I was at Euro uh, Cup in Manchester and I saw Crime City Rollers, well, we played against C team, not A team, but still it was like, <laughs> whoa, it's Crime City and we're playing against them. We lost, but still. But we, Crime the, City the, C are also very good. It's not like <laughs> yes, it's... well, we lost, but we the, the same game we play uh, with, against the Bristol Royal Derby and we won. So uh, th we had a lot of games and uh, we have great venues that want to cooperate with us. We have this amazing stream team, Manufactura Video, mm -hmm. and when you will uh, um, look at the first Slavic uh, streaming they watched and compare it with this one, they're also like getting better in this. We were managed to get into the WFTDA TV uh, so yeah, it's like thanks to this that we are we and Hell Badgers we are like uh, traveling and making contacts. What's what's about this? That's also important. Uh, so it's like uh, a lot of people uh, are uh, involved in in this. Well, that, that said, you got into WWTV because of Double H being in the same room as you when you were when you called when you said that you wanted to be on W on on W. 
TV. Yes, uh, but also I think they were like feeling a little bit ashamed that they didn't answer us in 217. <laughs> it was, a, it was, you know, this is this is this is why you make contacts and you go to, and you go yes. to uh, conferences. Yes, and that's why you know also, it's going to be in the room. I like the, the that's why things are happening. So when I first emailed WFTDA TV uh, in the 217 and they didn't reply, I was very well, yeah, angry because I like to be angry. I'm very often angry. Uh, but this, like, this happened for a reason that I could, like, say to Erika in 220, like, at Europe, right, at the same room, say, to, uh, in the same room. Uh, and that's why we got, like, into WFDA TV. That was also amazing. <laughs> So do you think it also helps Poland in a way being, I'm talking about being centrally connected, right? Poland's kind of near to and in between quite a lot of other countries that have got Royal Derby. Do you think it's helped? Because obviously you border obviously quite closely a lot of other countries with Derby. Do you think it's been helpful to Polish Derby or do you think Polish Derby would have grown the way it did without that? I see it in a different way. I see it like we are helping other countries because mm -hmm. we are very close to, uh, like you said, we are in the middle. Sometimes even people don't uh, treat Poland like Eastern Europe, but like mm. Central. Uh, so uh, I think, well, this is my mission, my personal mission, like to help develop the little, the, 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 the countries that are uh, on the East of, of Poland, like uh, this uh, event we, found out that we have in Warsaw the shop that are selling the roll line gear. So it would it's a good news for us in Poland, but also for the the people who like had to uh, uh, order it from um, Brussels or like other shops abroad. So it's always closer to, to us. But I don't know, like the rest talk if it's happening. <laughs> To Polish teams. So Polish teams. Uh. And I think a big part of it as well is that we do have these individuals and, and different teams um, and scattered throughout who are these tour de force type of individuals or people who started out in Poland um, have moved elsewhere and come back because they have family or they're still connected here in Poland and they brought um, their network here. And again, people fell in love with the, the atmosphere and the environment here, and it slowly moved that way because of these connections, right? A lot of us, whereas maybe in Poland, we started with these mixed teams inside. I know for officials at the beginning, a lot of us, when we started in officiating, traveled out and pretty quickly. Um, uh, as soon as I got into officials lounge, there wasn't really a uh, officials league when I started. There were officials, of course, but we didn't have sort of an org organized unified force at that point. Um, so I got into officials lounge and I just started traveling everywhere and, and made connections that way. Um, and again, found that oftentimes somebody knew one of the people who was connected to Poland already in a lot of situations too, where uh, we do have a lot of eager people willing to network, willing to support um, other people's uh, derby development as well. Um, so we're cooperative in that regard too. And I mean, I mean, you're both right. I mean, as Kitten noted, I think you, I, I mean, as the Baltic teams mentioned when they're in, the, I mean, they they have connections with with um, Finland, but they've also had had help from Poland, and of course, the Slavic tournaments and. When I've talked to teams in like as far far away as Sofia, there have been skaters who've said that they were they were excited by. I mean, well, there was Sofia is currently on hiatus, but the point was that they when they were going, they actually came into Poland. So I think you're right; it's also been paying it forward to other people. Um, yeah, we're waiting for Sofia. We're waiting for uh, Hungary to grow yeah. up enough to, to to come and visit our uh, Slavic. Baltic tournaments, though it's not Slavic, rather Baltic, but 
Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I we think should think, think about like a uh, to Mediterranean. <laughs> um, we we also got um, people in Norway were asking if they could bring their teams over because they had so much fun in Warsaw that they wanted to make this Slavic Baltic scan. You know, like they just want to. Um, so we've got at least two teams in Norway who want to come and play with us too. Um, in our team. well, we had like uh, in 217, we had this first. We, we've called it like I think first Warsaw Sevens tournament, yeah. and then the the Slavic triple header. So we most so this show how we thought back then that maybe the Warsaw Sevens tournament will be something annual, not the Slavic, uh, but maybe we just like need to rebrand the Slavic to more like European European un, uh, Europe tournament and make the seven tournament Warsaw seven tournament something uh, annual. I don't know. There's like so many plans right now, and uh, it's or make it twice a year. You know, one yeah. for Slavic <laughs> and one for Slavic. I mean, I. We are in the greatest position because we we can participate in you know in the both of the tournaments. Like yeah, <laughs> we are we are it. falling into these two boxes. <laughs> we'll see how 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 it will how it go. <laughs> like uh, Warsaw Hack has already organized like two events a year, like one tournament, one like double header at least, if not triple header. Uh, and uh, so uh, we also have that in mind that, well, I have that in mind, it would be great to travel somewhere to play so you don't have organized anything here at place. You just come, play and, and, and go home. Uh, but we'll see. For now it's very, really hard to say anything because of the COVID-19. We don't know how it will be with uh, cost of travel next year or even two so it all has to stabilize to so so we can plan anything mm -hmm. speaking of COVID-19 how are all your individual teams dealing with restrictions because I think Poland still has movement restrictions I think yeah yeah we do we, so how are you uh, as we for example Poznan we we have our training venue in a in a high school um, and as all the schools are for now shut down, there is no option for us to, to participate. And also there's a ban on, on like meeting up in groups of more than three people, I guess. Uh, so, so, so there is no option for us to do anything in group. Uh, I know that people are doing some individual, uh, practices. I mean, Maybe not uh, skating. Some of them were skating outside uh, when, when it was quite uh, when the weather was quite nice. Uh, but for the time being, the only things that we can actually do is like jogging or, or uh, I myself I'm I'm riding a bike uh, more recently because uh, I don't have spare set of wheels to use outdoors, uh, and I, I I really don't want to ruin my current ones. Uh, but uh, we're trying to, you know, like stay in touch. So we're checking on each other. We're uh, we're discussing some stuff uh, like personal things on, on Facebook group. So like we stay connected uh, as much as we can, and and we help each other with some things if if anyone needs anything. But uh, for the time being, we're just waiting for it to be over. Uh, I don't believe we will be able to, to have uh, practices until the end of uh, June, most probably. But then what we can count on is that they will reopen uh, everything, that everything will be, I mean, first, that everything will settle down and then everything will get reopened in that uh, uh, order. And uh, then what we were counting on to be honest is uh, for the International Poznan Fair to uh, be open again as every year we cooperate with them that's a huge huge place that uh, that is a venue for exhibitions uh, of different industries uh, throughout the year but during uh, summer holidays they uh, close and they only um, like let some people use the venue like us uh, for training sessions or some skaters, uh, people who ride scooters or, or 
do different stuff. There's this whole event called uh, Summer at the Fair, and, and uh, that's what we're using to, for our uh, not so regular, but, but still practices during the, the holidays. So I truly hope for uh, this to happen again, and, and that way we can reconnect. But uh, in the meantime, that's, that's what it looks like. I don't know if it's similar to, to you guys, but I believe it might be quite... Yeah, venues are, are, are closed, uh, roller skating arena, arenas are closed, so there's not many opportunities to have a training this time. Uh, but of course, uh, myself and my uh, colleagues from the team, uh, we are training by ourselves and we actually plan to uh, extend the trainings out and make them outside if, when the you know, the government regulations will be that, um, you know, more people can meet outside, we will do it, of course. So I hope that it will be, it will be soon because we are getting crazy here about our own kids. So <laughs> I hope that it will be soon. Yeah. Within our team, we started like, uh, I don't know if you did it as well, probably yes, because the, the world, you know, gone vi viral with this uh, challenge things, uh, workout mm. challenges and, and so on. So within the team, we did that and uh, well, yeah, someone started, you know, uh, to post videos with, with their workouts. So uh, we were felt, feeling encouraged to do something else and also to, uh, you know, to, to nominate the next pe uh, persons. And uh, I think we also did one um, on our Instagram as a team. So uh, yeah, it just basically it's just a way to stay connected within roller derby and skating uh, environment and you know try to comfort ourselves during these uh, <laughs> tough times yeah. because okay. yeah. <laughs> Yonda, did you do sock challenge already <laughs> yeah yeah we did we did actually yeah 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 it was uh, it was a nice first to be honest yes. and i don't want to repeat that but uh, it was better than you know this crazy a challenge with putting your shirt on while standing yes. on your hands. I mean, who does that? Come on! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I barely can, you know, jump off the off the ground, and you you're expecting me to stand on my hands and put a shirt on? Like, oh my god! I forgot that it's being recorded. Like, uh, I could easily yeah. do that, like, come on, just... <laughs> <laughs> I did it, but I didn't record it. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. I, I, yeah, we the same, the same. <laughs> I didn't record it. <laughs> I, do, I do know at least some people in some teams that did it, who did it several times to make sure that they, that they would look perfect and they only posted the one that worked, so... <laughs> With the same did with sock challenge, so you can imagine that making the a challenge with uh, putting your shirt on while standing on your hands, it's a little bit harder than sock challenge, <laughs> and we needed to repeat it. <laughs> so, you know, we need to uh, do challenges which are uh, feasible for us. <laughs> Like, okay, I will not propose that because it's still on the record, so... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we can talk about it off the record, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. So I know everyone's talked about sort of the community aspect of things, and I know that across the world of the community, I've had quite a lot of people saying that in a sense, the thing they miss most isn't so much the Rona Derby per se, but the community of people that they're part of. Would you say that's a thing? I mean, what do you, what do you, I mean, obviously you can't separate the two, but, um, is it that World of Derby is a community that makes it particular? Yeah. yeah. And it's like uh, now uh, a lot of people are not doing very well. Some are working from uh, home and they say that they work more than when they were working from offices. Some are afraid of uh, their jobs or already lose their jobs or are ab about to lose their jobs. So we all as a community uh, don't like 
uh, we are not all on our best right now. Uh, we as Hellcats, we don't push people to make any like challenges or anything. If you want to, we share the, 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 the links, etc. But it's also if you want to, then you can do it. If you don't feel very well, that's okay too. Uh, but uh, it's like we have a team chat and you're always like talking about this, about things that happen to us like on the streets, etc. So we live, uh, we know what we're doing also outside of Royal Dairy, but right now with the situation you have, uh, in our country that is like crazy, sooner or later it will come to, to this to politics, like the elections and, and uh, the restrictions, there are changing like almost every day. So it's like not really, there are not a good, cool, fun uh, conversations, but it's very hard to run from this. So it's like a little bit like getting involved in this chat. So also like with being in this, uh, with other people, we check uh, each other's if everything's fine, uh, but still, you know, it's very hard to get that cheer feeling and like, Mm. Yeah, yeah. That, that's how I feel it. Yeah, it's it, it's been challenging. I mean, with the with the NSOs, we had our we would back when we first started, we had um, meetings every other week, and we only had so much to talk about um, when we met that frequently. A lot of it was just establishing and maintaining rapport, so people could talk about their daily lives. It was a little bit a block of time that you had set aside where you didn't have to worry about any other stressors. And so um, we reduced it down to once a month, but we've sort of maintained this even when there's not a lot of progression. And it often ends up being that a good portion of it is just talking about how people are doing, what is going on. Um, our group has been, a lot of us have been sending individual messages to each other just to check up. Um, we've been very tight knit and, and emotional support has been a big component the whole way through. And as they've sort of said, there's a range of what that could mean in terms of what you're doing with your time right now in terms of your derby fix. Some people have worked on with the certification in this time. Uh, a group of us from our my league did an NSO um, with the clinic with Bert Hurt, you know, which was exciting because um, I, we wouldn't have had an opportunity to do a US with the clinic otherwise. So that was sort of fun and trying to find that positive spin. But if you can't do anything else, like if you can't, you don't want, you're not able to join our derby watch parties or our chat sessions, you know, sometimes it's just coffee sessions. We're very understanding that, you know, some people need this time for sort of, uh, you know, introspection and, and a break and other people need to reach out and, and everything's okay. Yeah, I'm really happy that I see all the skaters and all people I know from the, uh, you know, all the tournaments now. Uh, yeah, because I think that uh, we all miss each other actually and in the teams, within the, with teams. And I know that, you know, there was always two practices a week and we could, you know, just release the stress we have in life. And now the stress is so much bigger <laughs> and there is no... <laughs> There, we cannot, we, you know, we, can, we, we don't train, we don't sp speak face to face, so it's very, yeah, I, yeah. I, the answer is that we miss the pure community very much, I think. Yeah, but I think that, the, like, what I'm trying to remember right now is that, uh, you know, Derby is why we are here right now doing this, and, and thanks for doing that, definitely, Sam, because this is super cool uh, stuff. I don't know if for people who will watch this, <laughs> but, <laughs> like, I mean, uh, when I'm speaking, uh, not you guys, but uh, in general, I think that's, that's a cool thing. And that's the, the, like, the, the light at the end of the tunnel, because we know that it, this whole shit, sorry, pardon my French, but this will all be over uh, one day or another and we will get back to practicing, we will get back to, you know, having beers, we will get back to having fab slabs and stuff that we are used to having and, and that's really cool thing and also the, the support that we get from each other that we're not only teammates but real life friends that's that's really a uh, valuable thing and one thing i need to share with you is that uh, we actually had uh, we have one uh, derby mom right now 
uh, mm. she gave birth like a week or week and a half ago uh, but we didn't have chance to throw her a proper baby shower uh, so we did that via messenger and so we stay connected and it is possible we i i myself attended a uh, zoom uh wedding reception let's say because my <laughs> friends they needed to reschedule their uh, their wedding actually and and we wanted to do something uh, instead so we organized a, a party and we're drinking we're all dressed up so you know we are finding ways and and like i don't know which one of you said that but the derby people are so resource resourceful and uh, they will persevere and and they will just continue to to do that and you know derby uh it's the the, the, the starting point but it's the also the way we're going to so yeah i i believe it, it it's all mixed up yeah yeah it's a lifestyle come on <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Oh, it's like uh, <laughs> this part, this is lifestyle exactly yeah uh, as i've said uh, uh, already like things happen for a reason uh, last year i promised myself this year i won't travel so much for derby uh, <laughs> so thank you monica thank you for no doing no that no for come on let, let me let me end and that at the end of the year i will have uh, like no derby vacations at last but of course like this year already iraq happened and then ostrava happened and i was applying for tnt uh, so like i said okay so maybe not this year, but maybe <laughs> next year. And now this is happening. So maybe things are happening for uh, for a reason. And I finally will have a, a vacation, like without Derby there. I will see some other things that uh, training calls. And I maybe will come with some ideas for next year. Monica, <laughs> yeah. It's so funny that you are looking at the pandemic in a perspective way that uh, <laughs> pandemic stopped you from, from, from derby vacation. Like that was the ultimate, you know, the, the push button that made you stop. <laughs> I know, it's like when I'm talking with uh, my colleagues at work that's like not very much into derby, but they're like, oh, like I'm traveling, right? I'm volunteering at some events. Like, oh, you were in Helsinki. Did you saw something? Like, yeah, the venue and few like <laughs> shops where I was like buying breakfast and the hostel and well, that's it. I can tell you all about the public transport, how it works there. <laughs> uh, but like any like seeing like I need to be in Barcelona four times. Find that uh, on the fourth time I finally uh, see the Sagrada Familia because otherwise only whole uh, only the the sports venue. It's amazing. The sports venue is amazing, but <laughs> come on, <laughs> not so amazing to visit it like four times in a row. A better than Sagrada Familia? <laughs> uh, no, it's already there. And Sagrada Familia is still under construction. Yes, that's true. That's, that, that's true. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I was dreaming this year to have like a few days uh, with the Polish Sea uh, when not a lot of people are there and like not uh, watching, well, not derby, but maybe not not spending the whole time in the in the sport venue. So you know, it's like things are happening for a reason. And uh, yeah, I I want to say one more thing because we were uh, in in our derby uh, conversations. We were saying that. Uh, all the people basically are snowed under work like all the time or people are having two jobs or they are studying and, and keeping a job or, or so on and you know it's always uh, such a strange feeling when you sometimes when you miss the practice or when you decide not to go because you need to do something for work or stuff like that and for like for now we have someone else that have they decided for us that no, everything stops, your derby practices stop. Uh, and you know, it's like, I think we, we can actually have this time just to think, just to have a, you know, a breath of fresh air uh, and we don't miss anything because no one else is doing anything. So we can actually like feel the whole world has stopped for a while. We can have a break. Uh, maybe that we, that's what we needed and, and uh, I'm not sure if there is a, like if it happens for like some universe reason or anything, but I guess we can have some profits and not you know experience the the fear of missing out. 
So yeah, that's for what me, it's that's, very uh, often in derby that people are burning off because like do it yourself sport and everything you have to do and there are so many things and so many places you want to go etc etc now we all are like on the, in lockdown we have yeah. break especially from royal derby so maybe yeah this is also preventing uh, us from like burning out to like people mm -hmm. sometimes are taking off uh, the, the time off from derby because they need to rest from derby now like when it's not so, now it's obligatory. And now it's obligatory. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you have to search for for positives. Like uh, well, for my team, we are like uh, trying to make a little cleanups uh, in our Google Docs and Google spreadsheets and with our finances, like to you know for the things you never have time. So like with the papers and documents, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it's all like. Uh, we're not rushing with it, like rather slow than and like exact, but like not now, 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 because we, you have to, we don't have to, we just want to, we, we're using this time and also only those who are like uh, willing to do it and have time and space in their, in their uh, lives and minds to do it. But yeah, you have to search for the positives. So, mm -hmm. And after this enforced break, everyone will be as you say, probably much more excited to come back. Um, Hungry for their... Possibly yeah. too excited. And yeah. and so, yeah. many, I, so many hugs, so many consensual hugs will be happening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Consensual <laughs> hugs. I love that. Yeah. And, and I think that during the first game, the, the, the penalty box will be packed. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the stress, the, the stress relief will be like, you know, just uh, I, I, I believe that the, the first game would, could end up like in 15 minutes because there will be no one to, to, to play anymore because everyone would gather the maximum penalties and they will be out. <laughs> so it's like lately we have uh, in our team like the, the casual talk like uh, about our venues, if we are wondering if they will open after all this, etc, etc. And one of our, uh, well not freshy but like not very experienced player was like yeah let's play something uh just when it ends like let's play some ga game and like i didn't want to ruin their dreams but you know you have to first go to practices and get into shape because probably everyone after this break will be a little bit rusty so. Yeah, but that's cool. <laughs> Everyone will be fat and blobby, and we will all have the same level. Yes. Like we should, we should no, have yeah, a fat when blob fat or something. <laughs> when you're not fat, when no. you're fat and not very slow, it's hard for penalty. So it's not so easy to, to gain a penalty. So. We'll but just yeah, keep okay. rolling. <laughs> it can but, be beneficial because, like, I've been trying to put on weight, and I'm like kind of like the skinny type. And I've been trying to put on weight and, you know, that's just not happening during normal times. And now that I'm mostly sitting and eating, I'm just like, <laughs> yay, <laughs> finally. <laughs> well, you have to back on track and also like uh, remember how to be a team, right? Because it's not only about your personal shape, but how to communicate with uh, others on, on track. So also will probably take a... A little time well but i'm wondering what will happen next year if like everybody will be so hungry for royal derby they will be eager to play and officiate like if the next year will be gonna full of royal derby events and games and like everybody wants to have something we have organized. games already postponed from this year so mm -hmm. it might oh, be yes. twice as packed <laughs> Yes, yeah. but but it's like so. Uh, also, some teams like already spent the money for venue and they couldn't uh, have it back. So if they will have money for the next year, the, mm -hmm. the postpone or not? Like I'm very happy how it will look like. That's why I'm also not planning anything because I have. I'm I'm very curious how the next year will look. If it will be food of derby or like it will be like other casual year. We'll see. Yeah. Well, on that note, uh, it has been almost two hours. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> well, uh, people are very talkative. <laughs> yeah, but this is good. This is good. We like this is how long oh. you run usually. So, um, 
I think we've had a good conversation and I hope everyone who's listening to this gets at least the strong community feeling from Polish Derby because I think that's really the most striking thing about Derby in Poland is how fast you've grown and how many things you've done since you've existed that perhaps other regions might not have done in the same space of time. So um, uh, I hope everyone else has um, will pick this up in this video and I'd like to thank everyone for attending and for our viewers for watching. So everyone waves goodbye to um, the viewers and then um, we'll call this one in. So thanks for coming, everyone. And thank, thank you. you. Hey. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs>